What preceding series? Assuming Mauvi to be the first term of his series, Penrose, Bartol Darcy, Professor Goodwin, Julius Mastiansky, John Henry Menton, Father Bernard Corrigan, a farmer at the Royal Dublin Society's Horseshoe, Maggot O'Reilly, Matthew Dillon, Valentine Blake Dillon, Lord Mayor of Dublin, Christopher Callinan Lenehan, an Italian organ grinder, an unknown gentleman in the Gaiety Theatre, Benjamin Dollard, Simon Dedalus, Andrew Pisser Burke, Joseph Cuff, Wisdom Healy, Alderman John Hooper, Dr. Francis Brady, Father Sebastian of Mount Argus, a boot black at the General Post Office, Hugh E. Blazes Boylan, and so each and so on to no last term. What were his reflections concerning the last member of this series and late occupant of the bed? Reflections on his vigour, a bounder. Corporal proportion, a bill sticker. Commercial ability, a bester. Impression ability, a boaster. Why for the observer, impression ability in addition to vigour, corporal proportion and commercial ability? Because he had observed with augmenting frequency in the preceding members of the same series the same concupiscence, inflammably transmitted first with alarm, then with understanding, then with desire, finally with fatigue, with alternating symptoms of epicene comprehension and apprehension. With what antagonistic sentiments were his subsequent reflections affected? Envy, jealousy, abnegation, equanimity. Envy? Of a bodily and mental male organism specially adapted for the superincumbent posture of energetic human copulation, an energetic piston and cylinder movement necessary for the complete satisfaction of a constant but not acute concupiscence resident in a bodily and mental female organism, passive but not obtuse. Jealousy. Because a nature full and volatile in its free state was alternately the agent and reagent of attraction. Because attraction between agents and reagents at all instants varied with inverse proportion of increase and decrease, with incessant circular extension and radial re-entrance. Because the controlled contemplation of the fluctuation of attraction produced, if desired, a fluctuation of pleasure. Abnegation. In virtue of A, acquaintance initiated in September 1903 in the establishment of George Macias, Merchant, tailor and outfitter, 5 Eden Key. B. Hospitality extended and received in kind, reciprocated and reappropriated in person. C. Comparative youth subject to impulses of ambition and magnanimity, collegial altruism and amorous egoism. D. Extra-racial attraction, intra-racial inhibition, supra-racial prerogative. E. An imminent provincial musical tour, common current expenses, net proceeds divided. Equanimity. As natural as any and every natural act of a nature expressed or understood, executed in nature, nature by natural creatures in accordance with his, her, and their natured natures of dissimilar similarity. As not as calamitous as a cataclysmic annihilation of the planet in consequence of a collision with a dark sun. As less reprehensible than theft, highway robbery, cruelty to children and animals, obtaining money under false pretenses, forgery, embezzlement, misappropriation of public money, betrayal of public trust, malingering, mayhem, corruption of minors, criminal libel, blackmail, contempt of court, arson, treason, felony, mutiny on the high seas, trespass, burglary, jailbreaking, practice of unnatural vice, desertion from armed forces in the field, perjury, poaching, usury, intelligence with the king's enemies, impersonation, criminal assault, manslaughter, willful and premeditated murder, as not more abnormal than all other parallel processes of adaptation to altered conditions of existence, resulting in a reciprocal equilibrium between the bodily organism and its attendant circumstances, foods, beverages, acquired habits, indulged inclinations, significant disease, as more than inevitable, irreparable. Why abnegation than jealousy, less envy than equanimity. 
From outrage, matrimony, to outrage, adultery, there arose naught but outrage, copulation, yet the matrimonial violator of the matrimonially violated had not been outraged by the adulterous violator of the adulterously violated. What retribution, if any? Assassination, never, as two wrongs did not make one right. Duel by combat? No. Divorce? Not now. Exposure by mechanical artifice, automatic bed, or individual testimony, concealed ocular witnesses? Not yet. Suit for damages by legal influence or simulation of assault with evidence of injuries sustained? Self-inflicted? Not impossibly. If any, positively, connivance, introduction of emulation, material, a prosperous rival agency of publicity, moral, a successful rival agent of intimacy, depreciation, alienation, humiliation, separation protecting the one separated from the other, protecting separator from both. By what reflections did he, a conscience reactor, against the void of incertitude, justified to himself his sentiments. The preordained frangibility of the hymen, the presupposed intangibility of the thing in itself, the incongruity and disproportion between the self-prolonging tension of the thing proposed to be done and the self-abbreviating relaxation of the thing done, the fallaciously inferred debility of the female, the muscularity of the male, the variations of ethical codes, the natural grammatical transition by inversion involving no alteration of sense of an aorist, preterite, proposition, passed as masculine subject, monosyllabic, onomatopoeic, transitive verb with direct feminine object from the active voice into its correlative aorist, preterite, proposition, passed as feminine subject, auxiliary verb and quasi-monosyllabic onomatopoeic past participle with complementary masculine agent in the passive voice. The continued product of seminators by generation. The continual production of semen by distillation. The futility of triumph or protest or vindication. The inanity of extolled virtue. The lethargy of nescient matter. The apathy of the stars. In what final satisfaction did these antagonist sentiments and reflections reduce to the simplest form converge? Satisfaction at the ubiquity in Eastern and Western territorial hemispheres, in all habitable lands and islands explored or unexplored, the land of the midnight sun, the islands of the blessed, the isles of Greece, the land of promise of adipose posterior female hemispheres redolent of milk and honey and, and of excretory sanguine and seminal warmth, reminiscent of secular families of curves of amplitude, insusceptible of moods of impression or of contrarieties of expression expressive of mute immutable mature animality. The visible signs of anti-satisfaction, an approximate erection, a solicitous aversion, a gradual elevation, a tentative revelation, a silent contemplation. Then, he kissed the plump, mellow yellows, mellow mellows of a rump. On each plump, Malono's hemisphere in their mellow yellow furrow with obscure, prolonged, provocative, Malone's Malonos Osculation. The visible sign of Paul's satisfaction, a silent contemplation, a tentative relation, a gradual abasement, a solicitous aversion, approximate erection. What followed the silent action? Somnolent invocation, less somnolent recognition, incipient excitation, catechetical interrogation. With what modifications did the narrator reply to the interrogation? Negative. 
He omitted to mention the clandestine correspondence between Martha Clifford and Henry Flower, the public altercation at, in and in the vicinity of the licensed premises of Bernard Kiernan and Centigrid Limited 8, 9 and 10 Little Britain Street, the erotic provocation and response thereto caused by the exhibitionism of Gertrude Gertie, surname unknown, positive. He included mention of a performance by Mrs. Bandman Palmer of Lia at the Gaiety Theatre 46, 47, 48, 49 South King Street, an invitation to supper at Wings Murphy's Hotel, 35, 36 and 37 Lower Abbey Street. A volume of Pecamino's pornographical tendency entitled Sweets of Sin, anonymous author, a gentleman of fashion, a temporary confusion caused by a falsely calculated movement in the course of a postsenal gymnastic display. The victim, since completely recovered, being Stephen Dedal, professor and author, eldest surviving son of Simon Dedal, of the fixed occupation, an aeronautical feat executed by him, narrator, in the presence of a witness, the professor and author A4 said, with promptitude of decision and gymnastic flexibility. Was the narration otherwise unaltered by modification? Absolutely. Which event or person emerged as the silent point of this narration. Which event or person emerged as the silent point of his narration? Stephen Dedalus, professor and author. What limitation of activity and inhibitions of conjugal rights were perceived by listener and narrator concerning themselves during the course of this intermittent and increasingly more laconic narration? By the listener, a limitation of fertility inasmuch as marriage had been celebrated two calendars month of the 18th anniversary of her birth, 8th of September 1870, this 8th October, and consummated on the same date with female issue, born 15th June 1889, having been anticipatorily cons consummated on the 10th September of the same year and complete carnal intercourse with ejaculation of semen within the natural female organ having last taken place five weeks previous, this 27th November 1893, to the birth on 95, 95 December 1893 of second and only male issue, deceased 9 January 1895, aged 11 days. There remained a period of 10 years, 5 months and 18 days during which carnal intercourse had been incomplete without ejaculation of semen within the natural female organ. By the narrator, a limitation of activity mental and cor cor corporal inasmuch as complete mental intercourse between himself and the listener had not taken place since the consummation of puberty indicated by catamic, catamic hemorrhage of the female issue of narrator and listener 15 September 1903. There remained a period of nine months and one day during which, in consequence of a pre-established natural comprehension in incomprehension between the consummated female, listener and issue, complete corporal liberty of action had been circumscribed. How? by various reiterated feminine interrogation concerning the masculine destination whether the place where, the time at which, the duration of which, the object with which in the case of temporary absences projected or effected. What moved visibly above the listeners and the narrator's invisible thoughts? The upcast reflection of a lamp and shade an inconstant series of concentric circles of varying gradations of light and shadow. 
In what directions did Lister the narrator lie? Listener, S E by E, narrator N W by W, on the 53rd parallel of latitude, N and 60th meridian of longitude, W, at the angle of 45 degrees to the terrestrial equator. In what state of rest or motion? At rest relatively to themselves and to each other. In motion being each and both carried westward, forward and rearward respectively by the proper perpetual motion of the earth through ever-changing tracks of never-changing space. In what posture? Listener, reclined semi-literally, left left hand under head, right leg extended in a straight line and resting on left leg, flexed in the attitude of Gitalis, fulfilled, recumbent, big with seat. Narrator, reclined laterally, left, with right and left legs flexed, the index finger and thumb of the right hand resting on the bridge of the nose, in the attitude depicted in a snapshot photograph made by Perse Apjohn, the child man weary, the child man weary, the man child in the womb. Womb? Weary? He rests. He has traveled. With? Simba the sailor, and Timba the tailor, and Jimba the jailer, and Wimba the whaler, and Nimba the nailer, and Finba the failer, and Bimba the bailer, and Pimba the paler, and Mimba the mailer, and Rimba the hailer, and Rimba the railer, and Dimba the kailer, and Vimba the quailer, and Limba the wailer, and Shimba the tailor. When? Going to dark bed, there was a square round Simba the sailor, rocks, ox, egg in the night of the bed, of all the ox of the rocks, of a dark in bed, the bright tailor. Where? Yes, because he never did a thing like that before, as asked to get his breakfast in bed with a couple of eggs, since the City Arms Hotel, when he used to be pretending to be laid up with a sick voice doing his highness to make himself interesting to that old fact, Mrs. Reward, that he thought he had a great leg of, and she never left us a farthing, all for masses for herself and her soul, greatest miser ever, was actually afraid to lay out for D for her methylated spirit telling me all her ailments. She had too much old chat in her about politics and earthquakes and the end of the world. Let us have a bit of fun first. God help the world if all the women were her sort. Down on bathing suits and long necks. Of course nobody wanted to, her to wear, to wear. I suppose she was pious because no man would look at her twice. I hope I'll never be like her. No wonder she didn't want us to cover our faces. But she was a well-educated woman, certainly. And her gabby talk about Mr. Riordan here and Mr. Riordan there, I suppose he was glad to, sh to get shut of her. And her dog smelling my fur and always edging to get up under my petticoats, especially then. Still, I like that in him. Polite to old women like that, and waiters and beggars too. He's not proud out of nothing, but not always. If, if ever he got anything really serious the matter with him, it's much better for them to go into a hospital where everything is clean. But I suppose I'd have to drink it into him for a month. Yes, and then we'd have a hospital nurse that thing on the carpet, have him staying there till they throw him out. Or a nun, maybe, like the smutty photo he has. He's as much a nun as I'm not. Yes, because they're so weak and puling when they're sick, they want a woman and get well. If his nose bleeds, you'd think it was all tragic. And that dying look one of the South Circular when he sprained his foot at the choir party 
at the Sugarloaf Mountain, the day I wore that dress. Miss Tech bringing him flowers, the worst old ones you could find at the bottom of the basket. Anything at all to get into a man's bedroom with her old maid's voice, trying to imagine he was dying on account of her to never see thy face again, though he looked more like a man with his beard a bit grown in the bed. Father was the same. Besides, I hate bandaging him dozing when he cut his toe with the razor paring his corns, afraid he'd get blood poisoning. But if it was a thing I was sick then, we'd see what? Attention. Only, of course. Of course the woman hides it not to give all the trouble they do. Yes, he came somewhere. I'm sure by his appetite. Anyway, by his appetite anyway, love it's not or he'd be off his feet thinking of her. So either it was one of those night women, if it was down the US really, and the hotel story he made up, he made up a pack of lies to hide it, planning it. Heinz kept me. Who? Who did I meet? Ah, yes, I met, do you remember, Menton. And who else? Who? Let me see. That big baby face. I saw him, and he not long married, flirting with the young girl at Pool's Marioranma, and turned my back on him when he slinked out, looking quite conscious. What harm? But he had the impudence to make up to me one time. Well done to him, mouth almighty, and his boiled eyes of all the big stubbles I ever met, and that's called the solicitor only. For I hate having a long wrangle in bed, or else, if it's not that, it's some little bitch or other. He got in with it somewhere, or picked up on the sly, if they only knew him as well as I do. Yes, because the day before yesterday he was scribbling something, a letter. When I came into the front room for the matches to show him Dignam's death in the paper, as if something told me, and he covered it up with the blotting paper, pretending to be thinking about business. So very probably that was it to somebody who thinks she has a softy in him, because all men get a bit like that at his age, especially getting on to 40, he is now. So as to widow any money, she can out of him, no fool like an old fool. And then the usual kissing my bottom was to hide it. Not that I care two straws who he does it with or knew before that way. Though I'd like to find out, so long as I don't have the two of them under my nose all the time, like that slut, that Mary, that Mary we had in Ontario Terrace, padding out her false bottom to excite him bad enough to get the smell of those painted women off him once or twice. I had a suspicion by getting him to come near me when I found a long hair on his coat without that one. When I went into the kitchen, pretending he was drinking water, one woman is not enough for them. It was all his fault, of course, ruining servants, then proposing that she could eat at our table on Christmas, if you please, oh no, thank you not in my house, stealing my potatoes in the oysters, two six per dose, going out to see her aunt, if you please. Come on, robbery, so it was. But I was sure he had something wrong with that one. It takes me to find out a thing like that. He said, you have no proof? It was her proof, oh yes, her aunt was very fond of oysters. But I told her what I thought of her, suggesting me to go out to be alone with her. I wouldn't lower myself to spy on them. The garters I found in her room, the Friday she was out, that was enough for me. A little bit too much. I saw to that. Her face swelled up on her with temper when I gave her the week's notice. Better do without them altogether. Do out the rooms myself quicker. Only for the damn cooking and throwing out the dirt I gave it to him. Anyhow, either she or me leaves the house. I couldn't even touch him. If I thought he was with a dirty, bare-faced liar and sloven like that one. 
denying it up to my face and singing about the place in the WC too. Because she knew she was too well off, yes, because he couldn't possibly do without it that long, that long. So he must do it somewhere. And the last time he came on my bottom, when was it? The night Boylan gave my hand a great squeeze going along by the toka in my hand, there steals another. I just pressed the back of his like that with my thumb to squeeze back, singing the young May Moon, she's been in love, because he has an idea about him and me. He's not such a fool, he said. I'm dining out and going to the gate, though I'm not going to give him the satisfaction in any case. God knows he's changing a way not to be always and everywhere in the same old head, unless I paid some nice looking boy to do it. Since I can't do it myself, a young boy would like me. I'd confuse him a little alone with him. If we were, I'd let him see my garters, the new ones, and make him turn red looking at him. Seduce him. I know what boys feel with that down on their cheek, doing that frigging, drawing out the thing by the hour. Question and answer. Would you do this? That and the other with the co-man? Yes. With the bishop? Yes. I would, because I told him about Dean and Bishop, or Bishop, who was sitting beside me in the Jews Temple's garden when I was meeting that wall and thing, a stranger to Dublin. What place was it? And so on. About the monuments. And he tired me out with statues, encouraging him making him worse than he is. Who is in your mind now? Tell me. Who are you thinking of? Who is it? Tell me. Tell me his name. Who? Tell me. Who? The German emperor? Is it? Yes. Imagine I'm him. Think of him. Can you feel him trying to make a horror of me? What? He never will. He ought to give it up now at this age of his life. Simply ruination for any woman and no satisfaction in it, pretending to like it till he comes, and then finish it off myself anyway, and it makes her lips pale. Anyhow, it's done now once and for all, with all the talk of the world about it. People make it only the first time after that. It's just the ordinary, do it and think no more about it. Why can't you kiss a man without going and marrying him first? You sometimes love too wildly. When you feel that way so nice all over you, you can't help yourself. I wish some man or other would take me sometime when he's there and kiss me in his arms. There's nothing like kiss long and hot down to your soul, almost paralyzes you. Then I hate that confession. When I used to go to Father Corrigan, he touched me, Father. And what harm if he did? Where? And I said, on the canal bank, like a fool. But whereabouts on your person, my child? On the leg, behind, high up, was it? Yes, rather high up, was it? Where, you sit down? Yes, oh Lord, couldn't he say bottom right out and have done with it? What has that got to do with it? And did you, whatever way he put it, I forget. No, father, and I always think of the real father. What did he want to know for when I already confessed it to God? He had a nice fat hand, the palm moist always. I wouldn't mind feeling it, neither would he. I'd say by the bull neck and his horse collar. I wonder, did he know me in the box? I could see his face. He couldn't see mine, of course. He'd never turn or let on. Still his eyes were red when his father died. They are lost for a woman. Of course it must be terrible when a man cries, let alone them. I'd like to be embraced by one in his vestments and the smell of incense of him, like the Pope. Besides, there's no danger with the priest. If you're married, he's too careful about himself. Then give something to His Highness the Pope for a penance. I wonder, was he satisfied with me? One thing I didn't like, 
he's slapping me behind, going away so familiarly in the hall, though in the hall, though I laughed, I'm not a horse or an ass, am I? I suppose he was thinking of his father. I wonder, is he awake, thinking of me or dreaming I'm in it? Who gave him that flower? He said he bought. He smelt of some kind of drink, not whiskey or stout, or perhaps the sweety kind of paste they stick their lips up with some liquor. I'd like to sip those rich-looking green and yellow expensive drinks, those stage door jonies, drink with the opera heads. I tasted one with my finger dipped out of that American that had the squirrel talking stamps with father. He had all he could do to keep himself from falling, from falling asleep after the last time. After we took the port and potted meat, it had a fine salty taste. Yes, because I felt lovely and tired myself and fell asleep as sound as a top the moment I popped straight into bed till that thunder woke me up as if the world was coming to an end. God be merciful to us. I thought the heavens were coming down about us to punish us. When I blessed myself and said a Hail Mary, like those awful thunderbolts in Gibraltar. And then, they come and tell you there's no God. What could you do if it was running and rushing about? Nothing. Only make an act of contrition. The candle I lit that evening in Whitefriars Street Chapel for the month of May, see? It brought its luck, though he'd scoff if he heard, because he never goes to church burst. Though his, noise, his nose is not so big after I took off all my things with the blinds down, after my hours dressing and perfuming and combing it like iron, or some kind of a thick crowbar standing all the time. He must have eaten oysters, I think, a few dozen. He was in great singing voice. No, I never in all my life felt anyone had one the size of that. To make you feel full up, he must have eaten a whole sheep after. What's the idea of making us like that, with a big hole in the middle of us? Like a stallion driving it up into you, because that's all they want out of you. With that determined, vicious look in his eye, I had to half shut my eyes. Still, he hasn't such a tremendous amount of spunk in him when I made him pull out and do it on me considering how big it is. So much the better in the case of it wasn't washed out properly. The last time I let him finish in me. Nice invention they made for women, for him to get all the pleasure. But if someone gave them a pouch of it themselves, they'd know what I went through with Millie. Nobody would believe cutting her teeth too and Mina pure for his husband, give us a swing out of your whiskers, filling her up with the child or twins once a year, as regular as the clock, always with the smell of children of her. The one they call it budgers, or something like a nigger with the shock of hair on it. Jesus Jack, the child is a black, the last time I was there, a squad of them falling over one another and bawling you couldn't hear your ear, supposed to be healthy, not satisfied, till they have a swelling out like elephants. Or I don't know what supposing I risked having another not off him, though still if he had married. I'm sure it have a fine, strong child, but I don't know Paul G has more spunk in him. Yes, that would be awfully jolly. I suppose it was meeting Josie Powell and the funeral and thinking about me and Boylan sent him off. Well, he can think what he likes. Now, if that would do him any good, I know they were spooning a bit when I came on the scene.
he was dancing and sitting out with her the night of Georgina Simpson's housewarming and then he wanted to ram it down my neck on account of not liking to see her a wallflower that was why we had the stand up uh, row over politics. He began it, not me, when he said about our Lord being a carpenter. At last he made me cry. Of course a woman is so sensitive about everything. I was fuming with myself after forgiving it only, for I knew he was gone on me. And the first socialist, he said, he was. He annoyed me so much I couldn't put him into a temper. Still he knows a lot of mixed up things, especially about the body and the insides. I often wanted to study up myself what we have inside us in the family physician. I could always hear his voice talking when the room was crowded and watching after that I pretended I had on a coolness on with the over him mess or meeting he says your soul you have no soul inside only grey matter because he doesn't know what is to have one yes when I lit the lamp yes because he must have come three or four times with that tremendous big red brute of thing he has. I thought the vein or whatever the dickens they call it was going to because he used it to be a bit on the jealous side whenever he asked who are you going to and I said over to Floyd and he made me the present of Lord Byron's poems and the three pairs of gloves so that finished that I could quite easily get him to make it up any time I know I even supposing he got him with her again and was going out to see her somewhere I'd know if he refused to eat the onions I know plenty of ways ask him to take down the color of my blouse or touching with my veil and gloves on going out one kiss then would send them all spinning however all right well see them letting go to her she of course would only be too delighted to pretend she's mad love with him that I wouldn't so much mind I'd just go to her and ask her to do you love him and look her square in the eyes. She couldn't fool me, but he might imagine he was and make a declaration with his puppery kind of manner to her, like he did to me, though I had the devil's own job to get it out of him, though I disliked him for that it showed he could hold him and wasn't to be got for the asking. He was in the pop of asking me too, the night in the kitchen, I was rolling the potato cake. There is something I want to say to you only, for I put him off, letting on I was in a temper with my hands and arms full of pasty floor. In any case, I let out too much the night before talking of dreams, so I didn't want to let him know more than was good for him. She used to be always embracing Josie whenever he was there, meaning him, of course, gloaming me over. And when I said I washed it up and down as far as possible, asking me, and did you wash? Possible the women are always egging on to that, putting it on thick when he's there. They know by his sly eye blinking a bit, putting on the indifferent when they come out with something the kind he is what spoils him I don't wonder in the least because he was very handsome at that time trying to look like Lord Byron I said I like it though he was too beautiful for a man and he was a little before we got engaged afterwards though she didn't like it so much the day I was in fits of laughing with the jiggles I couldn't stop about all my hairpins falling out one after the another with the mess of hair I had. You're always in great humor, she said. Yes, because it grieved her, because she knew what it meant. 
because I use it to tell her a good bit of what went on between us. Not all, but just enough to make her mouth water. But that wasn't my fault. She didn't work in the door much after we were married. I wonder what she's got like now after living with the dotty husband of hers. She have her been just after a row with him because I saw on the moment she was hedging to draw down a conversation about husbands and talk about him to run him down. What was it she told me? Oh yes, the time, sometimes he used it to go to bed with his muddy boots on. When the maggot takes him, just imagine having to get him to bed with a thing like that, that might murder you any moment. What a man. Well, it's now the one way everyone goes mad. Pulled. Anyway, anyhow, whatever he does, always wipes his feet on the mat when it comes in wet or shine, and always blacks his own boots too, and he always takes off his hat when he comes up in the street, like then. And now he's going about in his slippers to look for 10,000 pounds for a postcard you up. Oh, sweetheart May, wouldn't a thing like that simply bore you stiff to extinction? Actually too stupid even to take his boots off now. What could you make of a man like that? I'd rather die 20 times over than marry another of their sex. Of course, he'd never find another woman like me to put up with him the way I do. I do know. Me come sleep with me, oh yes. And he knows that too, at the bottom of his heart, take that Mrs. Maybrick that poisoned her husband for what I wonder in love with some other man. Yes, it was found out on her, wasn't she the downright villain to go and do a thing like that? Of course, some men can be dreadfully aggravating, drive you mad and always the worst word in the world. What do they ask us to marry them for if we were, if you were so bad as all? That comes to, yes, because they cannot get on with us. Why arsenic she put in his chin? Of fly paper, wasn't it? I wonder why they call it that if I ask it him, he'd say it's from the Greek. Leave us as wise as we were before. She must have been madly in love with the other fellow to run the chance of being hanged. Oh, she didn't care if that was her nature. What could she do besides? They are not brutes enough to go and hang a human. Surely are they? They are so different. Oh, boy, talking about the shape of my foot. For he notes it at once, even before he was introduced, when I was in the D B C with Poldy, laughing and trying to listen. I was wobbling my foot. We both ordered two cheese and plain bread and butter. I saw him looking with his two old maids of sisters when I stood up and asked the girl where it was. What do I care with dropping out of me? And that black clothes breeches he made me buy takes you half an hour to let them down, wetting all myself, always with some brand new fat over every other week. Such a long one I did, I forgot my suit gloves on the seat behind. I never got after some robber of a woman, and he wanted me to put it in the Irish Times. Lost in the ladies' lavatory, DBC, Dame Street. Find a return to Mrs. Marion Bloom. And I saw his eye and my feet going out through the turning door. He was looking when I looked back and I went there for tea two days after in the hope. But he wasn't now. How did that exciting? Because I was crossing them. When we were in the other room, 
First, he made the shoes that are too tight to walk in. My hand is nice like that. If I only had a ring with a stone for my month, a nice aquamarine, I'm sticking for one. And gold bracelet. I don't like my foot so much. Still, I made him spend once with my foot the night after Godwin's botch up of a concert. So cold and windy, it was well we had the room in the house to move and the fire wasn't black out. When he asked to take off my stockings lying on the hard rug in Lombard Street West. And another time, it was my muddy boots he'd like me to walk in. All the horses dung I could find, but of course is not natural like the rest of the world. I, what did he say? I could give nine points to ten to cat eleven and beat her. What does that mean? I asked him. I forget what he said because the stop press edition just passed and the man with the curly hair in the Lucan dairy that's so polite, I think. I saw his face before somewhere I noticed it when I was tasting the butter. So I took my time. Bartel Darcy, too, that he used it to make fun of when tasting the butter. He commenced kissing me on the choir stairs after I said, I sang who knows Ave Maria. What are we waiting for? Oh, my heart. Kiss me straight on the brown, and part which is my brown part, he was pretty hot for all my teeny voice too. My low notes, he was always raving about it. If you can believe him, I like the way he used his mouth singing. Then he said, wasn't it terrible to do that? There, in a place like that, I don't see anything so, so terrible about it. I tell him about that someday, not now, and surprise him. Hey, and I take him there and show him the very place, too, we did it. So now, there you are, like it, or lump it. He thinks nothing can happen without it knowing he had an idea about my mother till we were engaged, otherwise he'd never have got me so cheap, and he did. He was low times worse himself, anyhow, begging me to give him a tiny bit cut of my drawers. That was the evening coming, coming along, Kenilworth Square, he kissed me in the eye of my glove, and I had to take it off, asking me questions. It is permitted to inquire the shape of my bedroom, so I let him keep it, as if I forgot it to think of me when I saw him slip into his pocket. Of course, he is mad on the subject of drawers. That's plain to be seen always skeezing at those brazen faced things on the bicycles, with the skirts blowing up to their navels even when Millie and I were out with him at the open air fete. That one in the cream muslin, standing right against the sun, so he could see every atom she had on. When he saw me from behind, following in the rain, I saw him before he saw me, however, standing at the corner of the Herald's crossroad, with the new raincoat on him, with the muffler in the tingery colors, to show off his complexion and the brown hat looking sly boots as usual. What was he doing there where he'd no business? They can't go and get what before he saw me, however, standing at the corner of the Herald's crossroad with the new raincoat on him, with the muffler in the tingery colors to show off his complexion. And the brown hat looking sly boots as usual. What was he doing there where he'd no business? They can't go and get whatever they like from anything at all with a skirt on it. And where were not to ask any question, but they want to know where were you? Where are you going? 
I could feel him coming along, skulking after me, his eyes on my neck. He had been keeping away from the house. He felt it was getting too warm for him. So half turned and stopped it. Then he pestered on me to say yes, till I took off my gloves, slowly watching him. He said, my open work sleeves were too cold for the rain. Anything for an excuse to put his hand and near me. Jowers, Jowers, the old blessed time till I promised to give him the pair of my doll to carry about in his waistcoat pocket. Oh, Maria Santisma, he did look a big fool dripping in the rain, splendid set of teeth he had made me hungry to look at. To look at them and beseech of me to lift the orange petticoat I had on with the sunray pleats that there was nobody, he said, had kneeled down in the wet. If I didn't so, persevering, he would to and ruin his new raincoat. You never know what freak they take along with you. They are so savage for it. If anyone was passing, so I lifted them a bit and touched his trousers outside the way I used to gardener after with my ring hand to keep him from doing worse where it was too public. I was dying to find out what was he circumcised. He was shaking like a jelly all over. They want to do everything too quick, take all the pleasure out of it. And father waited all the time for his dinner. He told me to say I left my purse in the butcher's and had to go back for it was a deceiver. Then he wrote me that letter with all those words in it. How could he have the face to any woman after his company manners making it so awkward after when we met asking me I offended you with my eyelids down? Of course he saw I wasn't. He had a few brains not like the other fool, Henry Doyle. I was always breaking or te tearing something in the charades. I hate an unlooking man. And if I knew what it meant, of course I had to say no. For form's sake, don't you understand? I said and wasn't it natural. So it was, of course, it used to be written up with a picture of a woman's on that wall in Gibraltar, in that world, I could find anywhere, only for children seeing it too young, then writing a letter every morning. Sometimes, twice a day, I liked the way he made love then. He knew the way to take a woman. When he sent me the eight big puppies, because mine was the eighth, then I wrote, the night he kissed my heart at Dolphin's barn, I couldn't describe it simply. It makes you feel like nothing on earth. But he never knew how to embrace well, like Gardner. I hope he'll come on Monday, as he said. At the same time, for I hate people who come at all hours. Answer the door, you think it's the vegetables, then it's somebody and you all unrest. Or the door of the filthy sloppy kitchen blows open, the day old frosty face Goldwyn called about the concert in Lombard Street. And I just after dinner, all flushed and tossed with boiling old stew. Don't look at me, professor, I had. I had to say, I'm a fright, yes, but he was a real old gent in his way. It was impossible to be more respectful. Nobody to say you're out. You have to peep out through the blind like the messenger boy today. I thought it was a put-off first. 
him sending the port and the beaches first, and I was just beginning to yawn with nerves, thinking he was trying to make a fool of me. When I knew his his tartar at the door, he must have been a bit late, because it was a quarter after three when I saw the two Daedalus girls coming from school. I never know the time. Even that watch that he gave me never seems to go properly. I do want to get it looked after. When I threw the penny to that lame sailor for England home and beauty, when I was whistling there, there is charming girl I love, and I hadn't even put on my clean shift or powdered myself or a thing. Then this day week were to go to Belfast, just as well he has to go to Ennis, his father's anniversary, the 27. It wouldn't be pleasant if he did. Suppose our rooms at the hotel were beside each other, and then f and any fooling went on in the new bed. I couldn't tell him to stop and not bother me with him in the next room, or perhaps some protestant clergyman with a coffin knocking on the wall. Then he wouldn't believe the next day we didn't do something. It's all very well a husband, but you can't fool a lover. After me telling him we never did anything, of course he didn't believe me. No, it's better he's going where he is. Besides, something always happens with him. The time going to the Mallow concert at Maryborough, ordering boiling soup for the two of us, then the bell rang out the walks, down the platform with the soup splashing about, taking spoon, fools of it. Hadn't he the nerve? And the waiter after him, making a holy show of us, screeching and confusion for the engine to start, but he wouldn't pay till he finished. The two gentlemen in the third class carriage said he was quite right, so he was too. He's so big headed sometimes when he gets a thing into his head, a good job he was able to open the carriage door with his knife and they'd have taken us onto Cork. I suppose that was done out of revenge on him. Oh, I love jumping in the train, in a train, or a car with lovely soft cushions. I wonder, will he take a first class for me? He might want to do it in the train by tipping the guard. Well, Oh, I suppose there be the usual idiots of men gaping at us with their eyes as stupid as ever they can possibly be. That was an exceptional man. That common workman that left us alone in the carriage that day going to Hof. I'd like to find out something about him. One or two tunnels, perhaps. Then you have to look out of the window, all the nicer than coming back. Suppose I never come back. What would they say, eloped with him, that gets you on, this, on the stage? The last concert I sang at, where? It's over a year ago. When was it? St. Teresa's Hall, Clarendon Street, little chips of Mrs. They have now singing Kathleen Kearney and her like on account of father being in the army and my singing the absent-minded beggar and wearing a brooch for Lord Roberts when I had the map of it all and Poldy not Irish enough. Was it him manage it this time? I wouldn't put it past him like he got me on to sing in this tabat matter, 
by going around saying he was putting lit, kindly light to music, I put him up to that till the Jesuits, Jesuits found out he was a Freemason thumping the piano, lit down me on, copied from some old opera, yes. And he was going about with some of them Schinner fame lately, or whatever they call themselves, to talking his usual trash and nonsense. He says that little man he showed me without the neck is very intelligent. The coming man, Griffiths, is he? Well, he doesn't look it. That's all I can say. Still, it must have been him. He knew there was a boycott. I hate the mention of politics after the war that Pretoria and Lady Smith and Bloemfontein were gardener, Lieutenant Stanley G, 8th Battalion, 2nd East Lancashire Regiment of Enteric Fever, he was a lovely fellow in khaki, and just the right height over me. I'm sure he was brave too. He said I was lovely. The evening we kissed goodbye at the canal lock, my Irish beauty. He was pale with excitement about going away, or with being seen from the road he couldn't stand properly and I so hot as I never felt they could have made their peace in the beginning or old on Paul and the rest of the, older, of the other old Krugers go and fight it out between them instead of dragging on for years, killing any fine-looking man there were with their fever if he was even decently shot it, wouldn't have been so bad. I love to see a regiment passing review. The first time I saw the Spanish cavalry at La Roque, it was lovely. After looking across the bay from Algeciras, all the lights of the rock like five flies, or those sham battles on the 15 acres, the black watch with their cutes and time at the march, past the tenth who starts the Prince of the Wales, won, or the Lancers, oh, the Lancers, their grand, or the Dublins that won to Gala. This father made his money over selling the horses for the Calvary. Well, he could buy me a nice present up in Belfast after what I gave him. They've lovely leaning up there. Or one of those nice kimono things. I must buy a mothball like, like I had before to keep in the drawer with them. With, uh, it would be exciting going round with him shopping, buying those those things in a new city. Better leave the ring behind. Want to keep turning and turning to get it over the knuckle there. Or they might be bell it round the town in their papers or tell the police on me. But they think we're married. Or let them all go and smother themselves for the fat lot I care. He has plenty of money and he's not a merry man, so somebody better get it out of him. If I could find out whether he likes me, I look at a bit washy, of course. When I look at close it in the gl hand glass powdering, a mirror never gives you the expression. Besides the scrooching down on me, like that, all the time with his big hip bones, he's heavy too with his hairy chest for this heat, always having to lie. You can get on this world without style. 
all going food and, and rent. When I get it, I'll lash it around. I tell you in fine style. I always want to throw a handful of tea into the pot, measuring and mincing. If I buy a pair of old brogues itself, do you like those new shoes? Yes. How much were they? I've no clothes at all. The brown costume and the skirt and jacket and the one at the cleaners? Three. What's that for any woman? Cutting up this old hat and patching up the other? The men won't look at you. And women try to walk on you because they know you've no men. Then with all the things getting dearer every day for the four years more I have of life up to 35, no. I'm, what am I at all? I'll be 33 in September. Will I? What? Oh, well, look at that Mrs. Galbraith. She's much older than me. I saw her when I was out last week. Her beauty's on the wane. She's a lovely woman. Magnificent head of hair on her down to her waist, tossing it back like that, like Kitty O'Shea in Grantham Street. First thing I did every morning to look across, see her coming, it as if she loved it and was full of it. Pete, I only got to know her the day before we left. And that Mrs. Langtree, the Jersey Lily, the Prince of Wales was in love with. I suppose he's like the first man going the roads, on for the name of a king. They're all made the one way, only a black man's I'd like to try. I built up to, what was she, 45? There was some funny story about the jealous old husband. What was it at all? And an oyster knife? He went, no, he made her wear a kind of a tin thing around her. And the Prince of Wales, yes, he had the oyster knife. Can't be true a thing like that, like some of those books he brings me, the works of Master Francois somebody, supposed to be a priest about a child born out of her ear because her bomb gut fell out, a nice word for any priest to write, and her a uh, e as any fool wouldn't know what that meant. I have I hate that pretending, of all things, with that old black guard's face on him anybody can see, it's not true, and that rubby and fair tyrants, he brought me that twice. I remember when I came to page 50, the part about where she hangs him up out of a hook with a cord, flagellate. Sure, there's nothing for a woman in that. All invention made up about the drinking the champagne out of her slipper after the ball was over, like the infant Jesus in the crib at inch core in the blessed virgin's arms. Sure, no woman could have a child that big taken out of her. And I thought first it came out of her sight because how could she go to the chamber when she wanted to? And she, a rich lady, of course she felt honored, age or age. He was in Gibraltar the year I was born. I bet he found lilies there too, where he planted the tree. He planted more than that. In his time, he might have planted me too. If had come a bit sooner, then I wouldn't be f here as I am. He ought to chuck that free man with a paltry few shillings he knocks out of it. 
and go into an office or something where he'd get regular pay, or a bank where they could put him up on a throne to count the money all the day. Of course, he prefers pluttering about the house, so you can steer with him and decide what's your program. Today I wish I'd even smoke a pipe like father to get the smell of a man or pretending to be mooching about for advertisements where he could have been in Mr. Cuff's still only for what he did, then sending me to try and patch it up. I could have got him promoted there to, to be the manager. He gave me a great mirada once or twice. First he was as stiff as the mischief really and truly Miss Bloom, only I felt rotten simply with the old rubbishy dress that I lost the leads out of the tails with no cut in it, but they are coming to fashion again. I bought it simply to please him. I knew it was no good by the finish. Pity I changed my mind to go into tods and bums, as I said, and not to lease. It was just like the shop itself, rummage sale, a lot of trash. I hate those rich shops, get on the nerves, nothing kills me altogether. Only he thinks he knows a great lot about a woman's dress and cooking, mothering, everything he can scour off the shelves into it. If I went by his advices, every blasty head I put on, does that suit me? Yes, take that, that's all right. The only the one like a wedding cake standing up miles off my head. He had suited me. And dish and the dish cover, one coming down on my backside on pins and needles. About the shop girl in that place in Grafton Street, I had the misfortune to bring him into, and she as insolent as ever. She could be with her smirk saying, I am afraid. We're giving you too much trouble, what she's there for? But I stared it out of her. Yes, he was awfully stiff, and no wonder. But he changed the second time. He looked poggy, big, big headed, as usual, like the soup. But I could see him looking very hard at my chest when he looked, stood up to open the door. For me, it was nice of him to show me out in any case. I'm extremely sorry, Mrs. Bloom. Believe me, without making it too marked, the first time after him being insulted and me being supposed to be his wife, I just half smiled. I know my chest was out uh, that way at the door when he said, I'm extremely sorry, and I'm sure you were. Yes, I think he made them a bit firmer, sucking them like that like that so long he made me thirsty titties he calls them i had to laugh yes this one how stiff the nipple gets for the least thing i'll get him to keep that up i'll take those eggs beaten up with marsala fatten them out of him what are those veins and things curious the way it's made too the same in case of twins they are supposed to represent beauty placed up like there, like those statues in the museums, one of them pretending to hide it with her hand. Are they so beautiful, of course, compared with what a man looks like with this two bags full and his other thing hanging down out of him or sticking up at you like a hat rack? No wonder they hide it with a cabbage leaf. That disgusting Cameron Highlander behind the meat market. Or that other wretch with the red head behind the tree where the statue of the fish used to be when I was passing, pretending he was pissing, standing out for me. To see it with his baby clothes up to one side, the queens on. They were a nice lot. It's well that Ceres relieved them. They're always trying to show it to you. Every time nearly I passed outside the man's greenhouse near the Harcourt Street station, just to f try some fellow or other trying to catch my eye, as if I was one of the seven mourners of the world. Oh, and the stink of those rotten places. The night coming home with Pody after the Comerford's party, oranges and lemonade to make you feel nice and watery. I went into one of them. 
It was so biting cold I couldn't keep it. When was that? The can I was frozen, yes, it was a few months after, a pity. A couple of the Camerons weren't there to see me squatting in the men's place, Midoro. I tried to draw a picture of it before I tore it up like a sausage or something. I wonder they are not afraid, going about of getting a kick or a bang of something there. The woman is beauty, of course, that's admitted. When he said I could pose for a picture naked to some rich fellow in Hall Street when he lost the jobs in Hellis, and I was selling the clothes and strumming in the coffee's palace, would I be like that bath of the nymph? with my hair down, yes, only she's younger, or I'm a little like that dirty bitch in that Spanish photo. He has names used. They go about like that. I asked him about her, and that word meant something with hoses in it, and he came out with some jawbreakers about the incarnation. He never can explain a thing simply the way a body can understand. Then he goes and burns the button out of the pen, all for his kidney, this one not so much. There is the mark of his teeth still where he tried to bite the nipple. I had to scream out. Are they fearful trying to hurt you? I had a great breast of milk with million off for two. What was the reason of that? He said, and I could have got a pound a week as a wet nurse all swelled out in the, in the morning. That delicate looking student that stopped in with Citron's pen rose nearly caught me washing it through the window only for I snapped up the towel to my face. That was the studenting hurting me, the used to winning her till he got Dr. Brady to give me the belladonna prescription. I had to get him to suck them. They were so hard. He said it was sweeter and thicker than cows. Then he wanted to milk me into the tea. Well, hers beyond everything. I declare somebody ought to put him in the budget if I only could remember that. And the half of the things and write a book out of it. The works of Master Cody, yes. And it's so much smoother, the skin, much an hour you was at them, I'm sure by the clock, like some kind of a big infant I had at me. They want everything in their mouth, all the pleasure those men get out of women. I can feel his mouth, oh Lord, I must stretch myself. I wish he was here, or somebody to let myself go with, come again like that. I feel all the fire inside me, or if I could dream it, when he made me spend a second time tickling me behind with his finger, I was coming for about five minutes with my legs round him. I had to hug him after. Oh Lord, I wanted to shout out all sorts of things, fuck or shit or anything at all, only not to look ugly or those lines from the strain. Who knows the way he had take it? You want to feel your way with a man. They are not all like him, thank God. Some of them want you to be so nice about it. I notice the contrast, and he does it and doesn't talk. I give my eyes that look, with my hair a bit loose from the tumbling, and my tongue between the lips up to him, the savage brute. Thursday, Friday, one Saturday, two Sunday, three. Oh Lord, I can't wait till Monday. See from train somewhere whistling the strength those engines have in them like big giants. The water rolling all over and out of them all sides like the ends of love's old sweet song. The poor men that have to be out of the night from their wives and families in those roasting engines stifling. It was today. I am glad I burned the half of those old free men's and photo bits, leaving things like that lying about. He's getting very careless and threw the rest of them up in the WC. 
get him to cut them tomorrow for me instead of having them there for the next year to get a few pence for them having have him asking for less generous paper all those old overcoats i bundled out for the hall making the place hotter than it is that rain was lovely and refreshing just after my beauty slip i thought it was going to get like gibraltar my goodness the heat there before the levanter came on black as night and the glare of the rock standing up in it like a big giant compared with their rock mountain they think it's so great with the red centuries here and there the poplars and they all white hot and the smell of the rainwater in those tanks watching the sun all the time weltering down on you faded all that lovely frock father's friend Mrs. Stanhope sent me from the B Marché Paris. Shame, my dearest Dogerina, she wrote on. What she was very nice. What's this? Her other name was just a PC. To tell you, I sent a little present. Have just had a jolly warm bath and feel a very clean dog. Now enjoy it, Wooger. She called him the Wooger. Would you give anything to be back in Jib and hear you sing in Old Madrid or Waiting Concon? Is the name of those exercises. He bought me one of those. Knew some word I couldn't make out shawls. Amusing things, but tear for the least thing still there. Lovely, I think. Don't you will always think of the lovely teas we had together? Scrunchers, currant scones, and raspberry wafers I adore. Well now, dearest Dogerina, be sure and write soon, kind. She left out regards to your father, all kept and grove, with love, years, fly, x, 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 x. She didn't look a bit merry, just like a girl. He was years older than her wooer. She, he was awfully fond of me. When he held down the wire with his foot for me to step over at the bullfight at La Linea, when that matador Gomez was given the bull's ear clothes we have to wear, whoever invented them, expecting you to walk up Killiney Hill then. For example, and that picnic always tasted up, you can't do a blessed thing in them in a crowd. Run or jump out of the way. That's why I, I was afraid when that other ferocious old bull began to charge the banderillos with the sashes and the two things in their heads, and the brutes of men shouting bravo toro, sure the women were as bad in their nice white mantillas, ripping all the whole insides out of those blue horses. I never heard of such a thing in all my life. Yes, he used to break his heart at me, taking off the dog, barking, bellowing, poor brute, and it's sick what became of them ever. I suppose they're dead long ago. The two of them. It's like all through a mist. Makes you feel so old. I made the scones, of course. I had everything all to myself. Then a girl, Hester. You is, we used to compare our hair. Mine was thicker than hers. She showed me how to settle it at the back. When I put it up, and what's this else? how to make a knot on a thread with the one hand. We were like cousins. What age was I then? The night of the storm I slept in her bed. She had her arms round me then. We were fighting in the morning with the pillow. What fun he was watching me whenever he got an opportunity at the band on the Alameda Esplanade. When I was with his father and Captain Groove, I looked up at the church first, and then at the window, then down, and our eyes met. I felt something go through me, like all needles. My eyes were dancing. I remember after, when I looked at myself in the glass, hardly recognized myself the change. I had a splendid skin from the sun, and the excitement like a rose. I didn't get a wink of sleep. It wouldn't have been nice on account of her, but I could have stopped in, in time. She gave me 
the Moonstone Druid. That was the first I read of Wiki Collins' East Line I read, and the shadow of Ashley Depp, Mrs. Harry Wood Harry Dunbar, by that other woman I lent him afterwards, with Mosley's photo in it, so as he, see, I wasn't without, and Lord Lytton Eugene Aaron Molly bound she gave me, by Mrs. Hungerford, on account of the name. I don't like books with a molly in them, like that one he brought me about, the one from Flanders. A whore always shoplifting anything she could, clothes and stuff and yards of it. This blanket's too heavy on me. That's better. I haven't even one decent night dress. This thing gets all rolled under me, besides him and his foolish. That's better. I used to be wettering them in the heat, my shift drenched with the sweat stuck in the cheeks of my bottom on the chair. When I stood up, they were so fetish and firm, and I got up on the sofa cushions to see, with my clothes up and the bug stands of them at night and the mosquito nets, I couldn't read a line. Lord, how long ago? It seems centuries, of course. They never come back, and she didn't put her address right on it. Either she may have noticed her wogger. People were, were always going away, and we never. I remember that day with the waves and the boats with their high heads rocking and the swell of the ship. Those officers' uniforms on shore leave made me seasick. He didn't say anything. He was very serious. I had the high button boots on, and my skirt was blowing. She kissed me six or seven times. Didn't I cry? Yes, I believe I did. Or near it. My lips were tatering when I said goodbye. She had a gorgeous wrap of some special kind of blue collar on her for the voyage, made very particularly to one side like, and it was extremely pretty. It got as dull as the devil. After they went, I was almost planning to run away. Mad out of it. Somewhere. We're never easy where we are father or aunt or marriage waiting. Always waiting to guide him to me. Waiting more speed. His flying feet. Their dumb guns bursting and booming all over the shop. Especially the Queen's birthday and throwing everything down in all directions. Of you didn't open the windows when General Ulysses Grant, whoever he was or did, supposed to be some great fellow, landed off the ship and old Sprague, the council that was there, from before the flood dressed up, poor man, and he in mourning for the sun, then the same old reveal in the morning, and drums rolling, and the unfortunate poor devils of soldiers walking about with mastings smelling the place more than the old long-bearded Jews in their jelly bees and lettuce assembly, and sound clear and gunfire for the men to cross the lines, and the warden marching with the keys keys to lock the gates and the bagpipes, and only Captain Rose and Father talking about rocks drift and Plevna, and Sir Garnet Wolseley and Gordon at Carton, lighting their pipes for them. Every time, when they out drunken, old devil with his grog on the window sill catch him, leaving any of it, picking his nose, trying to think of some other dirt story to tell up in a corner, but he never forgot himself. When I was there sending me out of the room on some blind excuse, paying his compliments, the Bushmill, Bushmill's whiskey talking, of course, but had do the same to the next woman that came along. I suppose he died of galloping drink ages ago. The days like years, not a letter from a living soul except the odd few I posted to myself, with bits of paper in them, so bored sometimes. I could fight with my nails listening to that old Arab with the one eye, 
and his he's of an instrument, singing his he, 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 a he, all my compliments of your hot pot, of your he's, as bad as now with the hands hanging off me, looking out of the window, if there was a nice fellow, even in the opposite house, that met to go in Holes Street. The nurse was after when I put on my gloves and hat at the window to show I was going out, not a notion what I meant. Aren't they thick? Never understand what you say. Even you'd want to print it up on a big poster for them. Not even if you shake hands twice with the left. He didn't recognize me. Either when I half frowned at him outside Westland Road Chapel, where does their great intelligence come in? I'd like to know great matter they have it, all in their tale. If you ask me those country gorgeous up in the city arms intelligence they had, a damn sight less than the bulls and cows. They were selling the meat and the coal man's bell, that noisy bugger trying to swiddle me with the wrong build he took out of his head. What a pair of poles and pots and pans and kettles to mend any broken bottles of for a poor man today, and no visitors or posts ever accept his checks or some advertisement like that wonder worker. They sent him addressed, Dear Madam, only his letter and the card from Lily this morning. See, she wrote a letter to him. Who did I get the last letter from? Oh, Mrs. Dewey, now whatever possessed her to write after so many years, to know the recipe I had for Pisto Madeleine. Floyd Delon, since she wrote to say she was married to a very rich architect. If I'm to believe all I hear with a villa and eight rooms, her father was an awfully nice man. He was near 70. Always good humor. Well, now Miss Tweedy or Miss Julesby. There's the pioneer. That was a solid silver coffee service he had too on the mahogany sideboard. Then dined so far away. I hate people that have always their poor story to tell everybody has their own troubles that poor Nancy Blake died a month ago of acute pneumonia. Well, I didn't know her so well, as all that she was Flo's friend. More than mine, it's a bother having to answer. He always tells me the wrong things, and no stops to say like making a speech. Your said, Birman sympathy. I always make that mistake, a nephew with two double U's in I hope he'll write me a long letter the next time. If it's a thing, he really likes me. Oh, thanks be to the great God, I got somebody to give me what I badly wanted, to put some heart up into me. You've no chances at all in this place like you used long ago. I wish somebody would write me a love letter. He wasn't much, and I told him he could write what he liked. Yours? Ever? Hug Boylan? In old madries, silly women believe love is sign. I am dying still if he wrote it. I suppose there'd be some truth in it. True or no, it fills up your whole day. And life always something to think about every moment. And see it all around you like a new world. I could write the answer in bed to let him imagine me short. Just a few words, not those long-crossed letters Ed Dillon used to write to the fellow. That was something in the four chords that jilted her. After out of the lady's letter writer, when I told her to say a few simple words, he could twist how he liked it, now acting with precipitate, precipitancy, with eco candour, the greatest earthly happiness answer to a gentleman's proposal. Affirmatively, my goodness, there's nothing else. It's all very fine for them. But as for being a woman, as soon as you're old, they might as well throw you out in the bottom of the ash pit. <laughs>